Hi there, folks. This is the uh, practice for the final exam. And as always, I am the amazing Mr. Jansen, so away we go. If we look at this first one, it asks us to convert uh, these degrees to radians. And I'm just going to use a little bit of factor label for this. So I start off with 125 degrees, and uh, I'm using my factor label. Remember that degrees and radians, the conversion here is that they're 180 degrees for every pi radians. Right? So that's my conversion. I just make sure my units line up so that the degrees cancel out. And so now what I end up with is 125 pi over the 180. And then really it's just a matter of reducing this fraction. So I've got to reduce the, uh, the 125 over the 180. And it looks like that reduces to a 25 pi over 36. And that's it. If I look at the next one, it asks me to convert this to degrees. Well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to set up some factor label here. So I've got this in terms of radians. So I need radians to degrees. Every pi radians, there's 180 degrees. And so what happens here is my units cancel, my pi's cancel. I just have 5 times the 180 divided by 3. And it looks like that gives me 300 degrees. And that's it. Okay, so we're just using a little bit of factor label. But this one asked me to draw a uh, negative 35 degree angle. And this doesn't have to be super accurate. Uh, I just want to determine what quadrant this thing is going to be in. So remember, I always start, starting position is right here on my x-axis. And if I want to count negative 35 degrees, it means I'm going to go clockwise. So 35 degrees is right around in here somewhere. So that would be my negative 35 degree angle. And then to list one coterminal angle, really all I have to do is take the negative 35 degrees, and I have to add or subtract multiples of 360. So an example would be just adding 360 degrees. And essentially what that does is it takes me from here around the circle one more time and lands me at the same spot. Okay? So if I add uh, the 360 degrees, that's going to give me a 325 degrees. That would be one option. Uh, I could also do negative 35 degrees minus 360 degrees. And essentially, that's going to take me back around the circle going this way and back to that same angle. Okay? So whether I add or subtract, uh, it's still going to essentially give me the same uh, thing, just a, a different way to express a different coterminal angle. Right? And that would give me a coterminal angle of a negative 395 degrees. Okay, so any one of these would work, and I could add another 360 to either one of these or subtract another 360, and give me another coterminal angle. So there's plenty uh, to choose from here. And the next one is asking me to find the arc length and the area of the sector. And remember, the arc length is just a piece of our circumference. So I set it up kind of like a, a ratio here. So if you think about the circumference, the circumference is 2 pi r. So the circumference of this particular circle is going to be 2 times pi times 5, uh, which is essentially 10 pi. So now if I set up a, a proportion here, basically I'm looking at a piece of that circumference. So I compare it to the degrees here. Right now I've got 75 degrees over the 360 degrees total. That's the same thing as whatever that piece is. So this piece that this guy covers over the total, which is 10 pi. Okay, so I do the, the piece that I'm looking at is 75 degrees, over the total circle is 360 degrees. The piece that I'm looking for, which is x, over the total circumference, uh, which is the 10 pi. And now essentially, I just cross multiply and I solve. So here, that's going to give me 360. I can get rid of the degree symbols. I don't need those. So I've got 360x equals 750 pi. And then I just divide each side by the 360. And I'm just going to go ahead and round this off. And if I round it off, it's going to be approximately, let me extend that a little bit, x is going to be approximately 6.54 uh, units, whatever those units happen to be. All right. In terms of the area of the sector, I essentially do the same thing, except I use area. Area is pi r squared. So I've got pi times r, which is 5 squared. So I've got 25 pi. That's my area. And I just want a piece of that area. The piece is represented by 75 degrees. So the portion I'm looking at is 75 out of 360. And I want to know how much that is 
out of the 25 pi. Okay, so again, the piece I'm looking at is 75 degrees over the total. I want to know the piece, which is x over the 220, uh, the, sorry, the 25 pi. And then again, I just cross multiply. Uh, 75 times 25. And now I'm just going to divide each side by the 360. Once again, I'm just going to plug this into my calculator and uh, round it off a little bit. It looks like it gives me about 16.36. I'll round it off there. And that's my area of the sector. All right. So I'm just setting up a proportion, the degree versus the whole thing uh, compared to the circumference, the degree versus the whole thing compared to the area. All right. If I take a look at number five, it says decide if the sequence is arithmetic or geometric, then find the next two terms. So for this one, I just look at what's happening each time. Am I adding the same thing each time, or am I multiplying by the same thing each time? And in this one, when I discover the pattern, it looks like I'm subtracting 6 each time. So the pattern is I'm subtracting 6, which is the same as adding negative 6, which means this thing is arithmetic. So this one is arithmetic because I'm adding the same thing each time. And if I keep the pattern going, uh, if I add the negative 6 one more time, it's a 32. If I add it again, that gives me a 26. And that's it. Those are my next two terms. All right. So this one's arithmetic, and the next two terms are the 32 and the 26. If I look at the next one, again, we're looking for the pattern here. I'm not adding the same thing each time because that doesn't work. Here I would subtract 6, and then I would subtract 3. So right away, that's kind of busted. It doesn't work. Uh, so I look to see, am I multiplying by the same thing each time? And it looks like I'm dividing by 2 each time, which means I'm multiplying. by one half. So I'm multiplying by one half each time. So the pattern is I'm multiplying by one half. If I do that again, it gives me a three halves. If I multiply by one half again, it gives me a three fourths, and so on and so forth. That keeps going. So those are my next two terms. And this one is geometric because I'm multiplying by the same thing each time. All right? For these, I'm going to use some of the formulas that are listed here. Uh, the first one asks me to find the 13th term of the sequence, giving a sub 1 uh, is 7 and d equals 3. And right away, I can tell that this is arithmetic. And I know it's arithmetic because it gives me a d value instead of an r value. d is the thing I'm adding each time. And if I just want the number of the term, I want to use this first equation right here. Okay, So I'm using this first equation, the a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And I just plug away here. This is a sub 13 because I'm looking for the 13th term. a sub 1 is a 7 plus n minus 1. Well, I know what n is. Sorry, that's a 13 times d, which is given to me as well. It's a 3. And really, this is just a job for my calculator. Uh, the only thing I have to do is make sure I follow order of operations. I do the 13 minus the 1 gives me a 12. Then I multiply by the 3. Then I do 7 plus that value. And I find out pretty easily that a sub 13 equals 43. And that's it. And uh, I'm not pleased with the way that a looks. There we go. That's much better. OK? And the next one asks me to find s sub n. In other words, find the sum if a sub 1 is 7, d equals 3, and n equals 20. So essentially, I have the same uh, sequence uh, that we're, we're looking at in number 7. But this time, it's a series because I'm finding the sum. So if I want the, the sum of an arithmetic series, and again, I know it's arithmetic because I'm given a d value. If I want that sum, I'm going to use this second equation, which is the sum of an arithmetic series. So I'm going to use that equation. I've got s of n. n is the 20. So s of 20 equals 20 over n times a sorry, 20 over 2. Let me try that again, because 20 is my n value a sub 1 is a 7 plus a sub n. Well, a sub n is like the 20th term, and I don't know what that is. So the problem is I'm missing a piece of this. What I have to do is I have to go back to this original formula. This formula over here gives me the, the value of that term. So I can use my a sub n or a sub 20 this time equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Once again, it becomes a job for my calculator. I do the 19 times 3 and then plus the 7. So I find out that a sub 20, my 20th term, is 64. And that's what I need over here for this blank space. I need that 64 plugged in here. All right. 
now I can actually find the sum. And essentially, the sum is basically giving us, uh, having us do the first term and the last term added together. And then we multiply by kind of the average number of terms. So it looks like when I do this, find out that the sum equals 4,480. Okay?